Hi, I'm going to teach you how to fix five killer problems that break any web scraper. I'm Alex Barlow, co-founder of Axiom. Let's dive in. Missing data and inconsistent HTML are the biggest reasons web scrapers fail and output inconsistent data. First, let me show you what I mean by missing data. Take a look at this wine listing site. Pretend we're scraping multiple pages from this site. Now, the pages look pretty much the same. A title, a description, price, and stock. Let's take another look at the first page. In fact, this page has four individual prices, but the other page only has two. The data has changed. Some is missing from this page. This could cause an issue when you try and output the data. For example, the order could be incorrect or pricing missing. Next, let me show you an example of inconsistent HTML. Now, you're not going to notice inconsistent HTML on the page. You're going to have to look under the hood. So let me show you on this listing page. Take a look at the ad. It looks the same as the listings. Specifically, look at the title and look at the title on the ad. They're pretty much identical. Same font, same colors, same hover effect. But if I just click into the other tab, this is the code underneath the hood. Look, the ads titles are wrapped in a div with these classes, a couple of attributes, and even a nested span tag. Whereas the listing for Wikipedia is simply wrapped in a H3 tag with three completely different classes. Although the elements look the same, they're completely different under the hood. This could also break your web scraper. Because in this case, how does a computer know which element to scrape? Because they're both completely different. Now, how do you solve these problems? There is no silver bullet. It's going to take a bit of learning and a bit of work. So, if you don't know about Chrome tools and the web inspector, you're going to need to learn about that. I'm going to open up the web inspector and you're also going to need to learn about classes. The most simple classes you can find with the web inspector. And in this example, if I wanted to capture only the new price, I could look for a unique class to that element. And you can see it here, product pricing new. So if I target that as a custom selector, I could extract just that element. But if I used product pricing, sorry, product pricing underscore price, I would end up extracting both old and new prices. So that's a small example of how you can use CSS classes to fix your missing data problems or your inconsistent HTML problems. To learn more in depth, look for the link to our blog article that I just showed you. We'll share a link in the comments, also in the description, and you can find it on our website, axiom.ai. Another problem you're likely to encounter when scraping websites is that your web scrapers simply break. Why? Because without any warning, someone has updated their website completely change the code base and your web scraper no longer works. How can you future proof against this? Well, it's difficult. You could try fancy queries using XPath to target structured data like mail to links, but that's got a bit of a learning curve. The simplest way you can future proof your web scrapers is not to build them with code, not to outsource them and get them built with code, is to use no code tools. There are plenty available on the market now, such as Octopass, Simple Scraper, and indeed Axiom. A no code tool allows you to maintain and redo your web scrapers in minutes, all without code. Just when you thought it was all over and there's no more problems to overcome, there's always more. Anti-bot measures. These are the thorn in every web scraper's side. The best way to deal with them 
is not to trip these meshes. Scrape slowly, scrape responsibly. Don't try and get 10,000 lines of data in an hour or in a day. Spread your scraping over many days and you'll never trip these countermeasures. But if you do trip these measures, this is what you can do. So countermeasures come in the form of number one, CDNs like Cloudflares. If you try and load pages too quickly, you'll get error messages like on screen now and the pages won't load. How do you defeat this countermeasure? Simply slow your bot down. Another countermeasure is websites will detect your bot or your web scraper because it's not telling the website it's human and then it will just block it. How do you defeat that? Well, there's plenty of tools out there or add-ons that you can use like Puppeteer's Stealth Mode. Finally, our favorite, Capture. We've all filled in Capture forms. They're annoying, we don't like them, but they're there to stop scraping, stop bots, and the good news is there's services that will do it for you. They can be integrated into any coded web scraper or into any no-code web scraper such as Axioms using a, a webhook. It's pretty simple. These services work well. Last of all, I would just like to round up and repeat again that the best way to avoid anti-bot measures is not to trip them in the first place. Scrape slowly. Be patient when extracting your data. Scraping at scale is another problem. It's full of hazards. Many we've already covered. For example, if you scrape at scale, going too fast, you're going to trigger anti-bot measures and your web scrape breaks. If you scrape over a length of time without checking your data, errors could occur and your data could become jumbled. For example, I had an issue caused on a web scraper when a pop-up had been added to a website encouraging you to join a webinar. That wasn't there when I built the scraper. I left the scraper running, it messed all the data up and it took me a few hours to catch it and I lost that time. So how do you fix this problem? We recommend that you break your large scale scrapes into batches, chunk your task up, check your data at the end of each chunk, and then collate it all at the end. For more about batching, you can check out the blog article that accompanies this video, the links and the YouTube comments section or description. The final problem we'll cover today is interacting with the UI. Now, you may be building a web scraper, but you need to click on the load more button to pull some more data into the page or interact with the search form like on this eBay page and enter some text and then click search. Well, how do you interact with the UI using an ordinary web scraper? Well, you've got two routes. You could use tools like Selenium, Python, or Google's very own framework Puppeteer, but they require coding skills and are very complex. Or you can go another route, the no code route. As we've mentioned before, that's the route we recommend when scraping the web, because it allows you to maintain and adapt your web scrapers very quickly without needing a developer. And at this point, I'm gonna recommend our own tool, Axiom.ai. It's got a complete range of browser interactions you can use in combination with a web scraper. For example, if you wanted to enter text into that search box, you could simply add a step called enter text to your automation, select the search field, enter the text in this field here that you want to pass through that box, and that's done. That's how easy it is to build and maintain web scrapers using Axiom. I hope you've enjoyed this video and it's helped expand your knowledge on how to become more powerful at scraping the web. We've also made a blog article to go along with this video that has a lot more in-depth detail and links to other learning resources. Please see the description or the comments to find the link on the YouTube page. Thank you.